To be jealous is a sin, yet he is a jealous god for uh, you shall not have any other gods but himself. Do you believe in God? I'm open to the idea of it, but if it does exist, it's not something I would pray to. Can you think of anything that God has done for you? I can't really name anything. Where do you think your eyes come from? Where do you think your ability to breathe and think and enjoy music and taste food and have friends and family? To walk? To speak? Where do you think all that comes from? It's not an explosion in space. That's crazy. Explain why is it that cells die, even though that's a flaw, right? Why is it that certain people are born with various different genetic disorders or disabilities? If there is such a thing as a grand design, wouldn't they be ended up perfect? Ever read the Bible? Not particularly. Because it answers your question to a T. Absolutely. It says, in the beginning, God made everything perfect. And then man rebelled against God and passed on a rebellious nature to all his offspring. And then came the fall when man rebelled against God, which brought in disease and pain and suffering and death. So all the suffering is evidence that what the Bible says is true. It shouldn't be used as, as an excuse to reject the Bible, which is God's word to humanity. The Old Testament, God promised to destroy death, Aiden, and the New Testament tells us how he did it. Did you know that? No. The Bible's an instruction book for humanity. It tells us where we're going wrong. It tells us how to find everlasting life. Okay, well then if the Bible's the only instruction, then how come there's so many different religious texts and also the different religious and beliefs uh, throughout human history? Another great question. If you study all those great religions, they all have one thing in common. They're all works righteousness religions. By that I mean they're all striving to do something to achieve immortality. They think they can, they think they can please God by their own religious works. The Bible says there's nothing you can do. You can't buy everlasting life by religious works. So do you think you're a good person? Relatively. Let's go to the, the seventh commandment. You shall not commit adultery. Have you ever committed adultery? No. Jesus said if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery whether in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yeah. How many lies have you told in your life? Probably too many to count. Have you ever stolen something, even if it's small, in your whole life? Yeah. Have you ever used God's name in vain? All the time. So here's a quick summation. I'm not judging you, but you've told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer at heart. And you have to face God on Judgment Day. If he judges you by those commandments on Judgment Day, will he be innocent or guilty? I guess guilty, and then I'd laugh at his face. Would you therefore go to heaven or hell? Um, hell? Do you know what death is according to the Bible? No. It's wages. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. In other words, God is paying you in death for your sins. Like a judge looks at a heinous criminal that's murdered multiple people, he says, you've earned the death sentence. This is your wages. This is what's due to you. This is what we're paying you. And death is so serious in the eyes of a holy God, he's put you on death row. Your death is evidence God is deadly serious about sin. Man, you're not concerned about your salvation, but I am. I'm horrified for you. I don't want death to seize upon you. Death is an arresting officer that's going to take you before the judge of the universe to stand in trial before God for transgressing his moral law, which he wrote on your conscience. Your conscience tells you right from wrong. Every time you've done wrong, you've known, you've known it's wrong. So here's a question for you. What did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Uh, Jesus Christ who died for our sins, but I'm Jewish, so... Well, I'm Jewish too, and so was Jesus, and so were the disciples, and so were the first 8,000 Christians. So we're talking about a Jewish religion. He was the Jewish Messiah that God promised he would give to deliver man from death, the Lamb of God. Now, most people know what you've just said, that Christ died for our sins, but they don't know this. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus came and paid the fine. That's why he said, it is finished, just before he died. He was saying, paid in full. Aiden, if you're in court and you've got speeding fines, if someone pays them, a judge will legally let you walk. He'll say, you've got speeding fines, but someone's paid him, you're out of here. He can let you leave legally. And God can take the death sentence off you legally, all because Jesus paid the fine in his life's blood on that cross. Now, because of his death and resurrection, God can remit your sins in an instant and grant you everlasting life as a free gift upon your repentance and faith in Jesus. Boy, you've been very gracious to listen to me. I know you've disagreed, but I really appreciate you listening and having an open heart. 
All you have to do to find everlasting life and be freed from the power of death is repent of your sins. And it's really hard to do. It's almost impossible because we love our sins. We love our pornography and we love living in rebellion to the God that gave us life. But if you ask God to grant you repentance and help you, he'll create a new heart in you and forgive your sins and grant you everlasting life as a free gift. So Aiden, are you going to think about what we talked about today? Because I remember you said you had an open heart. I'll think about it, but uh, just to finish off, I guess, because I guess we're finishing this off, right? Well, if you want to, you can keep going. I, I find you a very interesting person. You've got great questions, so it's up to you. Um, well, as a form of rebuttal, I guess, like, death comes for us all, even the, you know, very star that we sit under, right? It's just a natural part of this universe. Things live, things die. I, Why? It's just a matter of things. Why? Energy dies out. Freaking. Why? Um, what was it? Because things need, you know... Second law of thermodynamics. That's what's going on. Everything, everything's winding down, because God cursed the whole of creation. But there's one thing that doesn't wind down, and that's the living God. He's eternal, and he'll grant everlasting life and regenerate all those that put their faith in Jesus. He nullifies the second law of thermodynamics. Death is in our members, but when we're born again by the Spirit of God, that life of God in us is eternal. He'll seal you so that on Judgment Day you're saved from his wrath, from his just anger, and separated to everlasting life where God's kingdom's coming to this earth. And man... Aiden, I want to see you in that kingdom. I don't want you to go to hell. That breaks my heart. I love you. I care about you. And I'm so pleased you're going to think about this. But there's one thing that will destroy anything you say, and that's the word but. I'll think about it, but. In comes the knife and stabs it to death. So get rid of that but and just say, I'll think about this, because there's nothing more precious than your life. And that's what we're talking about today. Your life, where you're going to spend eternity. Does that make sense? Yeah. But, um... But, there it goes again. Out comes the knife. It makes sense, but I'll stab it to death. In the words of, in, like, the philosophy of uh, Nietzsche, um, I don't need God to have happiness in the life I'm already existing in. That is absolutely true. Hitler found the same thing. He didn't need God. He made up his, made up his own God and carried on his own agenda. So happiness is dependent on what happens. And you can be happy raping a woman. You can be happy robbing a bank because you get pleasure out of it. But it doesn't make it right. And the Bible says, Riches profit not on the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. Also, Nietzsche said God is dead. Where's Nietzsche? Also dead? He's dead. Not also. He's dead. God's, God's alive. And we know he's alive because he never dies. He's eternal. Aiden, thank you for listening to me. Can I give you a gift? Um, sure. <laughs> Let me get it for you. That's the Gospel of John. You know what a Gospel of John is? No. Fourth book in the New Testament. Religion has so many different hypocrisies in it, even Christianity and the idea of God, where God says, uh, what was it, to be jealous is a sin, yet he is a je jealous God for uh, you shall not have any other gods but himself. Yeah, was that a question or a statement? That was more of a statement. Yeah, so I'll give an answer to that statement. Any attribute that God has, whether it be jealousy or righteous indignation, is without sin. The Bible says, God is light and him is no darkness at all. When we have jealousy, that's a sin. But when God is jealous for those that he loves, that's not sin. The other thing about hypocrisy, the Bible says all hypocrites will go to hell, so you don't want to end up in hell with those hypocrites. The scriptures say, you who judge another and do the same things, do you think you'll escape the judgment of God? So God has seen all your sin and he's not worried about you worrying about them. He's worried about you on judgment day and doesn't want you to perish. You're stopped by the police on the freeway for speeding and you say, what about all those other people that are speeding? They're going to say, don't you worry about them, buddy. You worry about yourself. And God says the same thing. Every man will give an account of himself to God. So on judgment day, God's not on trial for his jealousy. You're on trial for your lust, lying, blasphemy and stealing. It seems like God is exempt from judgment from his creations. That's right. The criminal always wants to judge the judge, always speaks ill of him, but we're talking about the creator of the universe, the one that made the sun. When he spoke from heaven, the Bible says the Jews, the Israeli people were so terrified just at his voice, they thought they were going to die. Ever been in a lightning storm? 
multiple times. Pretty scary, isn't it, when you hear that thunder? I guess guilty and I now laugh at his face. That's not even God showing us anger. That's just nature doing its thing. So on Judgment Day, the Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into his hands. So make sure you repent, put your faith in Jesus, where you'll be safe from God's righteous anger. Does that make sense? Okay, a little nod. That's wonderful. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you check out the Living Waters podcast. And this is the Evidence Study Bible. It's everything I've learned in more than 50 years of reaching out to the lost. It's packed with information on apologetics, cults, evolution, atheism, and much more. Over 1,900 pages, including 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith. And make sure you check out the Starter Kit. It contains four of our most popular tracks, including 50 Ten Commandment Coins. Available at livingwaters.com. If you haven't seen, let me warn you of this poisonous doctrine. Please watch it. It's very subtle. It's creeping into the church and you need to be warned. You can watch it right now by clicking up to your left.